podcast interview show. I am your boy, the urban juggernaut Sean Black, most known me as a pro wrestler out here from representing Inglewood, California, LA, the inner city. I'll be doing it each and every way, each and every way how. Sean Black's been around, doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? And of course, I want to open up another platform for uh, other people, not only just pro wrestling, but just uh, entertainment, business, uh, just anybody with a great story to tell to inspire and motivate. Um, right now, we're in a time of just a lot of negativity. Uh, the media is rallying people up, and we got so much going on. But uh, we got always gotta see through the clouds, look through the light, and uh, just focus on uh, what's positive. You know, keep people smiling, keep people happy, keep people motivated, keep people staying on their grind, staying focused. People like I say, okay, laid off. Uh, we job searching, we we are hustling, we are staying on the grind, trying to get back. But I'm here to show myself, my platform, 310 TV, we're here to show that there is a light through the tunnel. And without further ado, matter of fact, even cameraman Jason, we got to give some noise because we have a milestone right now. We have our first female guest on the show in 310 Podcast history. Come on, give it up for y'all. Hey! To the one, the only, SoCal, one of the brawlers, the big brawler, just, she's, wow, she's insane. She is one of the dopest female wrestlers in SoCal right now. Please, everybody, show your love to Auntie Heidi, y'all. <laughs> oh, you do me too much of a service, Sean Black. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that accent too. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. That tends to slip through sometimes. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Welcome, Heidi. I mean, you are our first guest, for real. We're female guests, for real. Welcome. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys let me uh, be on your be on your lovely podcast. Uh, hopefully, I'll be uh, I'll be an actual uh, entertaining guest. Yes, 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 and that you all. Uh huh. So what we're gonna do start out first is um, we're gonna start out with your humble beginnings. Um, well, where are you from and uh, what got you into pro wrestling? Where uh, you, little Heidi, who, little, where is she from? <laughs> uh, little Heidi. Um, I would say I was I was born in West Hills. I moved around a lot, and um, what got me to wrestling was actually funny enough. It was an episode of uh, of Baywatch. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the Bash of the Beach episode where the WCW was on there. And I remember the moment that really kind of hooked me, and that was when Hulk Hogan takes this styrofoam boulder off of this kid, mm -hmm. and he just sells the heck out of it. Like, he makes it look like this Herculean effort. I'm like, I want this. It's, uh, and I became sort of a Hulkamaniac. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. I, around uh, high school, I kind of had to pretend that I wasn't uh, into wrestling because I hadn't heard of China at the time, and from what I'd seen, it was mostly just the broad panties and the, uh, the mud wrestling matches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, when I was in college, a friend of mine had introduced me to, uh, to reintroduced me to wrestling with the Undertaker Kane feud, uh, with, um, let's see, I believe, uh, oh, right, right, Triple H and the Daniel Bryan feud. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I saw China and Lita, the, the first one they did were. Um, for the whole, the stipulation was that if Lita loses, China spanks her. But because Lita put on a barn burner of a of a fight against her, even though she lost, China did not spank her because she respected her. She acknowledged the fact that she had a very grand fight, and that's kind of what got me back into wrestling. Uh, one of my uh, one of my old high school friends, Jay Stone. And he he worked as a ref, and I after hearing that uh, that he was one from my brother, I he was my brother's intermediary. Told and I told him that I was interested in becoming a wrestler because I <laughs> funny enough, even though I do kind of look very Undertaker-ish, it's uh, what got what wanted me to become a wrestler mm -hmm. was pain, especially that the um, the Twisted Life of Pain DVD set that has all of his cool matches, and the way that he just, he breathes that evil. He's just like deliciously into it. Mm -hmm. And that made me want to become a wrestler because of some very um, um, dark reasons I probably should not uh, say. Hey, we care. But um, yeah, one of uh, my high school friend, Jay Stone, told him I wanted to be wrestling. 
he first mentions that he knows. Uh, there was some conflict with uh, that in my work, so I couldn't do that. And but then he recommended MDW, or as it was referred to as MWA when they were stationed over in Norfolk. And I took their classes. I I I um, trained for about a year. Debuted in June uh, 2015, I believe. And um, after that, I believe he went on hiatus. I trained other places. I um, went to OEC. W. I trained under Shell and Shannon Ballard. He was one of the first people to bring to teach me how to basically incorporate stories into that class. And uh, that uh, you don't necessarily need to be the most athletic or the most flippy, but if you know how and when to do character, that can take you far. And I'm forever grateful for that because it, as a as an athlete, I. I can I can get myself up there, but uh, there were certain aspects of wrestling I didn't quite understand. Mm -hmm. And for a while, I kind of was faltering. I wasn't the best, um, as you can probably tell from some people and posted articles on me, which um, I don't I don't blame them. I was quite bitter for that, and I am kind of grateful for those articles because they kind of called me out on it, and I basically took them and I used that as a as is basically motivation to get better. Turn your hate into motivation. I, I guess so. Yeah. I don't really consider it that much of a case. Well, no, I mean, because I consider it criticism, but that's one of my favorites. Like, turn your hate into motivation. Oh. And you took, yeah, you took that, uh, mm -hmm. because it's funny, I was going to, how you say, I wanted to touch on that mm -hmm. and how you, because, I mean, um, for the rest, people who know my wrestling career, just like I said, I'm not making a show by myself. I had a time period Recently, I think my last year or so, my, I would consider I was riding high, and I got fat, out of shape. I had health issues, and my matches went down. And a lot of people, you know, I heard the hate, I heard we'll see stuff. And, but what I did was I said I have to do something about it. You, I'm the only one. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, from there, when you saw that. Critique when you saw it was very very rough, very harsh critique. Mm -hmm. How did you get that? You know, you said you turned it into catapulted that mm -hmm. into stronger, but when you saw the initial, well, how did you feel that reaction to some of those? So Cal Central was very brutal. Uh kind of, but I would say at first I was kind of self conscious because prior to that point I was kind of coddled and sort of like I, nobody was really giving me proper criticism, mm -hmm. or they just didn't feel that way. They probably had, I just haven't remembered, because I have a terrible memory, mm -hmm. minus the concussion. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. I, was, I was like, dang, I never knew. <laughs> uh, no, I just I just have a plain bad memory. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So at first it kind of kind of shook me, but then I kind of looked at it and I'm like. I could be, I could settle on where I am and try to shut all of that out, or I could take that and move forward because I've seen people basically block out that type of criticism and kind of stick their fingers in their ears and go la 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 la. They hate us because they hate us. And, and they make a damn fool out of themselves. Yeah. And at one point, I could admit when I was younger, I was like that too. So I've been there. You know what I'm saying? But you get it. I hear you. Uh, but yeah, it um, basically one of the uh, one of the other wake up calls was when I did a dark match for uh, for Rise, and um, basically uh, uh, Michelle Martinez gave uh, uh, sorry um, uh, Mercedes Martinez. Okay. There we go. Uh, but yeah, she gave me some pretty strong criticism, and I'm like, this is what I need to work on. And I when I was training under Peter Avalon, he also kind of described certain things about my base dip. But he did it in a way that finally clicked. Peter Avalon's a solid dude. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Peter, AEW. Oh yeah, he also knows how to teach people who are neurodivergent, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, which is something I've had to deal with growing up. I mentioned before the issues with learning certain things. And um, but yeah, he explained things in a way that I was able to finally understand, and I. Started, I started applying that to when MPW had come back from one of its hiatuses when it uh, reopened in Nova, no, no, Northridge, Northridge. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and 
I basically applied that to training there again. And and Ray Rosas and Danny Devine and Brendan Devine, they all three of them helped me out considerably. Mm -hmm. They they helped me out with how with uh, bringing out my strengths, with hiding my weaknesses, and I got a whole lot of great storylines out of that. I I believe um, let's see. In fact, one of the interesting storylines I was put into was uh, was the idea that I wasn't getting booked. Mm -hmm. And I put out an open challenge, and but because nobody wanted to deal with me, in character I mean, mm -hmm. nobody would come out, and I would just use my voice and my words to kind of get the crowd behind me. And it, uh, it built, and we built, and we milked it for weeks upon weeks until we had our, uh, our uh, basically our, two, our 2000 uh, pastiche type of show, where we came out, where uh, we had a uh, where we had a female heel, um, Eliza Hammer. She's an amazing. Oh, girl. that's my girl. Shout out to Eliza. Oh, know. shout out to Eliza. Oh my God. And uh, uh, the manager, he's a good dude too. Oh, Donovan Troy. Yeah, Donovan Troy. What up, y'all? What up, y'all? Keep uh, keep going. Uh, oh my God. When she won the D6 uh, Galaxy Women's Champion for me, it was well deserved because uh, she was a much better champion than I ever was. Mm -hmm. All right, so right there, um, mm -hmm. you know, SoCal and Center went really hard on. Uh, D6W. Mm -hmm. um, they're solid people to mind. You know, mm -hmm. They're a new company. And it's one of those things. It was a baby. And, you know, it had, and he had to grow, had to learn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm not really into the jumping on board or bashing or things like that. Mm -hmm. So they still fan. They, they, they always going to be my family. No matter what. Mm -hmm. Cool crowd, as I'm going to say. Um, you were one of, uh, and, you know, me at one point, too, when, we, when it all started, you were a big part of their growth and you've had insane matches uh and i think i think that's me personally and not speaking on you i think that's when you got more a little more spotlight in, 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 in terms like you have to carry the women's division yeah so talk about how that felt during that time period um i would say i'm very grateful that they um that they allow me to be more experimental with my promos. Mm -hmm. That's um, and one of the things I, I value is the fact that I got to go incredibly trippy with it. I got to make eyes appear. Uh, one of my favorite promos was where it was completely first person in a dark, dark hallway, just with notes everywhere, yeah. saying what I'm going to say in the promo, and mm -hmm. all I'm just doing is singing a song about a, uh, a, ma a man haunting his wife. Yeah. And that got over quite a bit. And uh, in terms of carrying the company, that... Well, the women's division. Oh, the, sorry, the women's division. It was like you, Mariah, Eliza, Aoka, mm -hmm. uh, Candy for briefly, but you had a lot of matches there. Oh, yeah. I would, uh, let's see. I would say I... Let's see, what's the best way to put this? Um, I would say I was, uh, I was definitely incredibly great. I wanted to. I wanted to do better. Uh, like you had mentioned about your weight problem, I was very. I'm very thankful that they did give me that spotlight. I. I did feel bad that. Um, that um, I, it could maybe the, the title could have gone more to Mariah, but because um, she she really helped me out with. Uh, she made my ass look really amazing in that um, they rolled the world match. Oh my God, that's one of my best. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. And I'm also thank. And also, uh, Eliza was a grand opponent. I also faced Grace Bambina there. Uh, Elizabeth Safdie. Um, I'm also grateful I got to meet, or at least to meet, meet a bunch of wonderful women there as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. goals. What goal? Uh, um, we've seen a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Recently, you told me you joined the Santino Brothers online. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So we see that, uh, you know, just like myself, uh, we see that we're in the trenches. We're trying to make the changes to ourselves to better our wrestling, better mm -hmm. our careers. So just uh, what are some of your goals for the future? Um, I would say I originally I wanted to uh, branch out a bit because for a while it was just MPW, uh, OTCW, and D6. And I kind of want to spread myself out there, you know. Kind of. 
I always have, oh, Eric. Eric Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Yes. Cockamania, Amped Up. Oh, yeah. I definitely want to do more Amped Up shows, man. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I'm like, this is one bad. It's all right. Culpa. Uh, but, yeah, I definitely want to do more Amped Up shows. I want to branch out to, like, EWF. Um, let's see, Championship Wrestling. Uh, though, I want to also kind of improve my gimmick and gear. Me too. Kind of step it up. I want to go. I want to go to the places. I want to go to the championship wrestling I mentioned. Do more amped up. I want to maybe do a, a do New Japan, maybe Ring of Honor eventually. Mm. Although I really want to make sure that my stuff is up to snuff before I even attempt it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I've been. Uh, I've heard the workouts are brutal before you even start the ring. Really? Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's um, that's why I'm kind of working on uh, working on drawings to work with my character. Uh, this was from a storyline involving. Um, uh, me and Brendan Devine, where I'm trying to win his friendship. Uh, I need you to make me a sketch, girl. <laughs> I need you to look that. I'll shoot you know, I'll shoot, look out for you, little dollars. <laughs> oh, yeah, little dollars. Uh, but yeah, both of them were using my animation back to uh, work on making prints. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, yeah, see? Here you go. Oh, man. What do we, well, Jason, our first week of leaders here, bro. <laughs>
it's sort of a weird thing. Uh -huh. It's a, I mean, it's a, I try not to indulge in that, in, in the character a bit too much. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's sort of an inner, <coughs> I don't like freak you. <coughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, uh, Heidi does come out from time to time. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I, it's, Uh, so, uh, you said you wanted social media. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, Facebook, IG, whatever you would like people to find you at. Oh, yes. Um, basically, Facebook is going to be Heidi. I am planning on making a separate one, but for IG, it's Auntie Heidi, one word. For, uh, for Twitter, it's Auntie Heidi with a, with a uh, underscore in between. Zoom in on that, Jason. Mm -hmm. All right, you got it. Right.